In this module, I want to talk about blogging. Now, I believe everyone should have a blog. It's actually the most important site you will ever create online. The reason is it helps your readers connect with you. Your readers can find out who you are, you know, what you do online, what your philosophies are, everything about you. And, and, and that helps them connect with you. And obviously, people who like what you do are going to then be more inclined to follow what you do online. And this also helps you promote your products and services. So if you're, you know, if you're writing a, about your, your latest product on your blog, you're obviously going to link to it. People who like what you do are going to click those links and they're going to be inclined to buy your products and services. Now, you can also build a list from your blog. Um, I actually have a couple of opt-in forms on my blog. I have one which just simply lets people connect with me. And I have another one which is a pop-up, which from time to time I change, but it usually offers some sort of service. Um, I find those two methods work best. Now, my most popular website, bar none, is my blog. And I get the most subscribers from my blog, simply by giving away as much free content as I possibly can. Because obviously people who want to learn more will opt in. Now, if you don't have a blog, make this your top priority, okay? Because it's something everyone should have. Now, when you make your blog, it needs to be attractive, okay? It, it doesn't want to be something that's just thrown together, okay? I see a lot of blogs out there which have great content, but they look poor. And and I think, um, you know, if, you, if, if your blog looks poor, it's obviously going to be a bad reflection on who you are and what you do. And what you'll probably find is you'll probably find people hit your blog, say it's, it looks poor, and then leave without even reading. So a nice theme and professional graphics are a must, okay? It doesn't cost much to get some professional graphics created for a blog, and it's something I would advise everyone to do. A lot of people will maybe create their own header or their own graphics, and they think they look good when the truth is they don't. Um, leave the graphic creation to the professionals, because that's, you know, that's someone who knows what they are doing. I could create something. I could spend three or four hours, you know, creating a header. And at the end of the day, it would look rubbish. And that's three or four hours I could have spent doing something else. So I'd much rather pay someone who knows what they are doing, um, you know, the money to get this done. Now, make sure you have an opt-in form and or a pop-up on your homepage. Like I say, if you look at my blog, johnthornhill.com slash blog, you will notice a pop-up and an opt-in form on the right-hand side. And that's a method I have tested um, over the years I have found works best for me. Now, this is very important, okay? Less is more. Avoid bells and whistles. And by that, I mean, you don't want to really have uh, music on your blog. You don't want to have flashy graphics. You don't want to have tons and tons of banners. Because, you know, although some people may think the more banners they put on their blog, the more money they will make. It's not true, okay? And um, you don't want to be putting, you know, signing up for 50 affiliate programs and putting flashing banners for all of these on your blog. It just looks terrible. Um, truth be known, you don't really be wanting any anything that flashes or, or you know, has animation. You might get away with little things, but it, the, real, the reality is less gets you more results, okay? So avoid the bells and whistles. People are visiting your blog to read it, not to look at flashy banners, okay? Now, you can watch the installation video I have created. I have actually walked you through how I created my blog. Okay, walked you through it step by step. So obviously, watch that video and you will learn exactly how to set up a blog just like mine. Once your blog is set up, obviously, you're going to have to start writing. Now, you need to make your content the best you possibly can. Think, you know, you're going to keep hearing this, but don't just write you know, and put half effort into it. You need to make it the best you can because people are going to read this. And this is going to reflect on what you do and who you are. So if you write poor content, your blog is going to be seen as poor. People are not going to want to find out more, not opt in, not look at everything else you do, and, and they're going to leave. So make sure your content is the best it can possibly be. Again, make sure the content is 100% original, no PLR. You don't want to be just copying and pasting articles onto your blog. Um, this is techniques that people used to use. You know, it's called auto-blogging. Um, 
I, you must have seen these sort of blogs. It's just the content is pure trash. You know, you're not getting any value from that. You're not going to click any links. You're going to just cl close, close the page. Um, so you know, it's all about creating good content. And and if you use PLR, that's not going to happen. Now you can use PLR to actually research topics to write about, but don't use the content. Okay, so you can take an article. Let's say, for example, a ten traffic tips PLR article, and then you could obviously rewrite the article completely, or use those ten traffic tips for ideas. Okay, or write about it in your own words, but don't use the PLR itself. Again, write for people, not search engines. You know, you don't want to be thinking of keywords. You don't want, because that will spoil what you write. You know, other people will tell you otherwise, but please write for people. It's people who visit your blog. It's people who read your content. Search engines come and go, change the rules. You know, you may find you may find a method that works for a little bit, but a few weeks down the line or a few months down the line, it won't work. But what, what will always work is good content. So write for people to read your content. Be yourself. You can't be anybody but yourself, okay? Um, I think you see some people, you know, when they put stuff on their blog, they sort of are not themselves. I don't know how I can really word this properly. They may, they may try and be something they are not, and that will come across wrong. Um, it will come across like they aren't experienced. Just be yourself. Um, you know, you, if, you're, if there's something you're not sure of, um, you know, you can maybe write about that. You know, maybe see, I, I'm not very experienced in this method or whatever, but here's my take on it, and here's the results I've had. You'll find throughout this course, um, I'm going to talk about how I know nothing about SEO. Now, I could maybe learn a little bit about SEO and pretend I do know about it, but the truth is I don't. I'm being myself. And I think people appreciate it more if you're actually honest. Um, now, because I know nothing about SEO, um, you know, I have to find out other ways to drive traffic, which I'm teaching you now. So be yourself. Make sure you encourage comments. Um, what you want, when, you, when people read your post, you want them to leave a comment. Um, because this helps generate more traffic. What this is one SEO thing I do know um, is Google loves fresh content, and if people are leaving good comments for you, this is going to be picked up. This is going to drive more traffic, um, and 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 hopefully when people leave comments as well, they are going to share these comments maybe on Facebook, maybe on their blog. So you you want as many comments as possible. Okay, so make sure you encourage comments. What I tend to see at the end of my blog post is feel free to leave a reply. Or what are your thoughts on this? Do you agree, disagree? Let me know, good or bad, that sort of thing. Make sure you proofread your posts before they go live. Now, this is crucial again, okay? I can write a blog post and miss, you know, miss something that's so, so obvious because I wrote it. When you write your own content, it's harder to see the mistakes you have made. So always have someone read your post before you make it live because you'll probably find there'll be something you you didn't pick up and you think to yourself how did i miss that um so you know you don't want you don't post going out with tons and tons of errors yes you can get away with little errors here and there but if it's something that's happening a lot you know five six times throughout the post again this will reflect on the quality of your blog um, and you won't get the results you desire i always Try to add images to my posts, and it's something I advise you do. Um, if you put an images in your image in your post that's related to the blog post, I think it just it makes it look more attractive, and it breaks up the text as well. And um, if you look at my blog, you'll find most of my posts have a usually an image in the top right corner of the post. And I just think as people browse your blog, it just makes it look more you know more appealing. And at the end of the day, a blog has to look good. So try to add images to your posts. You know, it doesn't have to be at the beginning. It could be halfway through or near the end, whatever. But if you add images, it breaks up the post. Now, make sure your images are legal. Don't just go to Google, search for an image, right-click, copy, uh, or save, and then save that to your blog. Because you may find you are, you are using a uh, an image you're not allowed to, and this could have massive repercussions, okay? You could get big, big fines. Um, so make sure images are legal. I tend to use um, a site called Fortolia. That's why you can download stock images, cost around a dollar each, um, and use them on your blog. Yes, it's a dollar for an image, but it gives you peace of mind. Okay, I can sleep at night knowing every image on my blog isn't there isn't any copyright issues. Um, you know, it only takes you to do one image that you shouldn't. You know, list one image you shouldn't, and you could be in real, real trouble. 
So make sure you're getting your images from reputable locations. Try to post at least once per week, okay? Um, you don't want to go, you know, you don't want to go through a stage where you're not writing for maybe a two or three months. I see really good looking blogs and I see they don't get updated for months. Very, you know, it's, it's, it's also, it's also sad to see. Um, you know, you want to be keep updating your content, um, especially in the early days. Okay. Now in the early days, you may think, you know, no one's coming to my blog. I'm not getting the comments, but you have to keep writing because believe me, the visitors will come. This is something you have to work on. Okay. But once you get the traffic and, you know, just keep doing it, but post at least once per week. If you look at my blog, you'll see most months I post two, three, four times. Um, you know, sometimes I go over a week, but I try to post at least once per week. And also try to link to other related posts within your blog. So if you're writing about a certain technique, maybe I wrote about five traffic techniques. And maybe, you know, a few months earlier, I wrote about a different traffic technique. Obviously, I would link to that. Okay. And, um, you know, at the end of the post, you may find this post interesting if you, if you like the one you've just read, that sort of thing. So make sure you try to do that because you want people to be browsing your blog. It's what you want people to do. You want to look about, like what they see, and ultimately click on your offers or opt into your mailing list. You should also consider guest posts. Um, obviously, I've got a, a full section dedicated to writing guest posts, but you should also consider letting people do it for you. The reason being is this is a great way to get fresh content on your blog for very, very little work. There's two things you should try and do when you get the guest post. The first thing you must do, actually, is not try to do, you must do, is make sure the post is 100% unique and you have exclusive rights to the post. That means it will only appear on your blog. So when someone wants to guest write for you, make sure that you get them to agree to that. Second thing, say there's some sort of offer you can promote at the end of the post. Maybe, you know, if I had a traffic expert write for me, maybe they had a, a traffic guide. Obviously, I would link to that through my affiliate link. Then you can hopefully earn some money from that. Now, obviously, the thing we want to do most of all with our blog is drive traffic. So, when you write a new post, inform your subscribers. If you're on my mailing list, you will know every time I write a new post, I mail out and let all of my subscribers know, and this drives tons and tons and tons of traffic to my to my posts. Um, to my blog and, and you know what you what I find is a lot of people start sharing the content and it goes viral you also want to make sure you share your post on Facebook and um, if you've got any groups any pages and um, if you are in any groups and it's 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 allowed to do so make sure you share um, because that's a massive massive way of using social media to drive traffic to your blog and um, you will see when I write a new blog post again if you're if you're on my friends list or in any of my groups I post to my wall, to my groups, to my pages, you know, to let people know I have new content for people to read. Use social media tools to help your content go viral. This is crucial, okay? Um, I use a tool called Sharebar, okay? There'll be links, don't worry about it, there'll be links in the resources so you can check this out, but um, basically, that's a tool what enables people to share my posts on Facebook, It enables them to click like, so that will appear on their wall, they can share via Twitter um, and via other social media platforms. This has a massive effect on my blog posts. Some of my blog posts have been shared hundreds and hundreds of times. Some will eventually go into the thousands of times because people like what they read, they click share. Again, a little bit like the comments, ask readers to like and share and they will. Did you like what you read? Please share it with your, your friends, you know? Uh, please click like if you like this, this blog post. Just, just ask and people will do it. Finally, if people leave comments, reply to the comments here. Don't just you know let people leave comments and leave it at that because when people leave comments and you reply, it makes them feel important. So you want to be replying to comments made so it encourages people to keep coming back and keep leaving comments on your blog. So, let me give blogging a traffic rating. Implementation, five stars, okay? It is something that is easy to set up. Once, If you have a cPanel hosting, three or four clicks, you can have a blog set up. You can watch my video and have it looking great within an hour. Okay? It's easy to implement. 
speedy results again five stars all it takes is a few posts you know your blog's posts start to go viral using the tools i suggest get listed on facebook stop me that your subscribers instant results okay five stars again work involved once it's set up it's not that hard to do one or two posts per week it's all it takes to drive tons and tons of traffic to your website products and services remember my blog gets me more subscribers than any of my products ever do and i get the most traffic to my blog my blog some days gets over a thousand hits a day okay and all i'm doing really is writing three to four posts per month so there's not a lot of work involved for the rewards therefore my overall traffic rating for blogging is five stars this is something you need to be doing now underneath this video i'm going to actually link to a, a very 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 cheap product that in my opinion is one of the best blogging guides on the internet it's called the bloggers roadmap and it's been written by my good friend daniel sumner it is an absolute fantastic read and an absolute bargain if you want to take blogging to the next level i would recommend you check that out you will see a link underneath this video